Today on Rap. The Supreme Court extends the suspension of the reproductive health law. The Ombudsman investigates an alleged $230 million pork barrel scam. And an international tribunal begins hearings on the Philippines' case against China in the South China Sea dispute. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The Supreme Court extends the status quo anti-order, stopping the implementation of the controversial reproductive health law. The order is supposed to end Wednesday. Voting 8 to 7, the High Court extends the order effective, quote, effective immediately until further orders. The vote, I am told, is 8-7. I have not been told who voted for which. On March 19, the law's critics won a temporary victory when the High Court stopped the implementation of the RH law for 120 days. The law was supposed to take effect March 30th. On July 9th, anti-RH advocates questioned the constitutionality of the law in oral arguments before Supreme Court justices. The next round of oral arguments for and against the controversial measure is on July 23. The RH law funds the distribution of free contraceptives and requires government hospitals hospitals to provide reproductive health services. In a unanimous decision, the Supreme Court overturns a presidential order conferring the National Artist Award on four individuals. The court says the July 2009 proclamation signed by then-President Gloria Arroyo is, quote, invalid and must be set aside. The order declares Cecil Guidote Alvarez, filmmaker Carlo Caparas, architect Bobby Manosa, and fashion designer Pitoy Moreno national artists. In August 2009, the High Court suspends the conferment of the National Artist Award on the four following a petition by Virgilio Almario and Bienvenido Lumbera and many others. The petitioners say the award was illegal because the four were not among the nominees shortlisted by the National Commission on Culture and Arts and the Cultural Center of the Philippines. The Council chose four awardees for 2009, the late filmmaker Manuel Conde, writer Lazaro Francisco, musician Ramon Santos, and painter Federico Aguilar Alcuaz. The petitioners say Arroyo removed Santos from the list and inserted the four. The Order of National Artists is the highest national recognition given to individuals who made significant contributions to Philippine arts and culture. Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales creates a six-person team to probe an alleged 10 billion peso or 230 million U.S. dollar pork barrel scam supposedly hatched by Janet Lim Napoles. The expose by Ben Herlui reveals huge amounts of PDAF were used in ghost projects by alleged fake non-governmental organizations or NGOs. Ombudsman records show Napoles, Lui, and other NGO officers face complaints in the fertilizer fund scam cases pending in this office. Records also show the office is investigating apparent anomalies in the implementation of livelihood projects funded by the PDAF, the pork barrel fund of three senators and one representative. Senator Miriam Santiago and former Senator Panfilo Laxon take their hostility to another level, this time focusing on Laxon's impending appointment as anti-corruption czar. Laxon says he submitted to Malacanang a draft executive order that will create an anti-corruption agency he will head. He says the new anti-corruption agency has operational capabilities and a law enforcement arm. But in a statement Tuesday, Santiago calls Laxon's proposed position unconstitutional, illegal, immoral, and egotistic. She adds, his plan is laughable and ridiculous. It is unintelligent. Santiago says Congress, not the president, can create a public office. In response, Laxon says, only the corrupt and the corruptible will resent the creation of an anti-corruption body. Santiago says she scandalized that Laxon, a non-lawyer, drafted the proposed executive order. She also accuses Laxon of seeking to undermine other cabinet officials. 
Immigration Chief Ricardo David Jr. quits his post. Deputy Presidential Spokesperson Abigail Valte says President Benigno Aquino accepts David's uh, resignation dated July 12. Valte does not say why David resigned, but various immigration officials have complained about David's lackluster performance in the agency. I have not seen the exact contents of the resignation letter. What was communicated to me was that uh, Commissioner David felt that he, it was but proper for him to take full responsibility for um, events that may have transpired under his leadership of the Bureau. In September 2012, I President Aquino scolded the Bureau of Immigration for failing to prevent the escape of the Reyes brothers, the suspects in the murder of broadcaster Jerry Ortega in January 2011. Aquino also cites the case of Korean national Kim Tae Dong, who was wanted by the South Korean government. Kim escaped from a hospital where he was confined while immigration BI personnel were guarding him. David, a retired Army general, was the first Armed Forces Chief of Staff to be appointed by Aquino. He served as Armed Forces Chief for nine months. Malacanang welcomes survey results showing Filipinos are satisfied with how democracy works under the administration of President Aquino. In the first quarter 2013 Social Weather Station survey, satisfaction with the way democracy works reaches a record level of 74%. SWS says the record high rating was reached in March 2013 before the May midterm polls. The palace says in the four surveys conducted annually under the Aquino administration, the satisfaction rating does not dip below 64%. It's the longest period of sustained satisfaction since 1986. The palace says the 74% satisfaction rating is the highest figure since the polling firm began running the survey in 1991. Despite opposition from Beijing, an international tribunal begins to hear the Philippines' case against China over the West Philippine Sea, or internationally known as the South China Sea. The Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs and the Office of the Solicitor General jointly make the announcement days after another heated exchange between the Philippines and China. In a press briefing, DFA spokesman Raul Hernandez says the tribunal, quote, was formally constituted and held its first meeting on July 11th at The Hague, the Netherlands. China repeatedly rejected the proceedings the Philippines initiated under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea or UNCLOS. Despite this, Hernandez says the process will continue with the tribunal consulting both parties, quote, every step of the way. Asked if the Philippines will win the case by default because of China's snub, Hernandez says the Philippines has a big advantage and that the case will be, quote, heard on its merits. He adds, it has always been our position that the nine dash line claim of China has been expansive, excessive, and illegal. The West Philippine Sea dispute heated up after, uh, it heated up again the past few days after the Chinese foreign ministry said Philippine officials lied in Belgium about the territorial row. Tropical Dis Depression Isang intensifies Tuesday um, as it continues to move towards northwest Luzon. As of 4 p.m., Isang is located 230 kilometers east-northeast of Baler, Aurora, carrying maximum winds of 55 km per hour. Storm signal number one is up over Aurora, Quirino, Isabela, Ifugao, Mountain Province, Abra, Kalinga, Apayao, Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, Cagayan, including Calayan and the Babuyan group of islands, and Batanes. The tropical depression will enhance the southwest monsoon, bringing light to moderate rain and thunderstorms over Mimaropa, Calabar Zone, Bicol, and western Visayas. Panama's president says officials stopped a North Korean vessel en route to Cuba and found missile equipment on board. President Ricardo Martinelli says drug enforcement officials monitored the ship as it approached the Panama Canal and was taken into port. He says officials found containers believed to be, quote, sophisticated missile equipment. In the past year, North Korea threatened nuclear war against its enemies after its third nuclear weapons test in February. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number four, Japanese billionaire Kazuo, Ota, Kazuo Okada, eight Japanese casino executives, and 16 Filipinos face charges for violating the Philippines' anti-dummy law. Investigators from the Justice Department say, say that in 2007, 25 individuals and 10 companies made the Okada Group appear qualified to acquire the land where its $2 billion Manila Bay Resorts Casino Entertainment Project is located. The Justice Department adds, right from the beginning, 
Okada-led Universal Entertainment is behind the operations of the three dummy corporations. Philippine laws do not allow foreigners to own land. At number five, officials from the five Southeast Asian nations meet to discuss the hazardous smog that affects the region every year, but the worst hit countries hold out little hope of an early solution. In June, forest fires on the Indonesian island of Sumatra left neighboring Singapore and Malaysia choking on the worst haze in more than a decade. Singapore Prime Minister Lee Shen Lung says the forest fires will require, quote, the best will in the world to stop. Singapore and Malaysia want Indonesia to punish those behind the fires, but Jakarta says some fires started in plantations owned by Malaysian palm oil firms. At number eight. Filipino Android users can start using Filipino search terms with a built-in Google search app starting July 15th. The service works on Android smartphones running OS 2.0 Eclair or higher. Google engineers build a Filipino speech language model with the help of volunteers who provided voice samples. Google's voice search for Filipino isn't going to be perfect, but as more people use the new service, the ability of voice search to get it right also improves. At number nine. Apple faces another social media-led issue in its second largest market in China. On July 15th, Apple says it will investigate claims an iPhone electrocuted a 23-year-old Chinese woman who was making a call while charging her cell phone. The case draws attention after it was posted on China's popular microblog service, Sinai Weibo. Apple's Beijing-based spokeswoman offers condolences to the family and says the company will investigate the issue and cooperate with authorities. And at number 10. A tiny new moon is spotted circling Neptune, the 14th known to be orbiting the, far, the furthest planet from the sun. U.S. space agency NASA says this moon is the smallest ever glimpsed around Neptune and measures just 19 kilometers wide. Astronomers found the moon by tracking a white dot that appeared repeatedly in more than 150 photos taken by the Hubble telescope from 2004 to 2009. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel, and your vote comes down to the mood navigator that's in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most votes on their mood meter. These stories have gotten the most votes. They have affected our readers the most. If you take a look today, you have the Supreme Court extends stopping the RH law. That's today's top story. And you have 5% happy, 11% annoyed, and a large majority, 78% angry. The story that's gotten the most number of votes today in the last 24 hours, Miriam to Aquino, pro pork scam. You have 7% happy, 7% amused, and a whopping 79% angry. The red contributing to the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, July 16th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.